Welcome back. Herbal District will soon have another secondary school to help cater for the growing number of students in the district. So far, Malaguna Technical Secondary School is the sole secondary school in the district pre- and post-eruption. A groundbreaking ceremony was held recently at the original Boysen High School premises in the Kumbu LLG of Herbal District to kickstart a planned redevelopment of the school which was destroyed during the 1994 volcanic disaster. Mapun Pidian reports from Kokopo. Boysen High School will now be revived not just to its former days, but now elevated as a secondary level school. An elated member for a bile, Dr. Alan Marat. But we have constructed two classrooms. Let me have to place another Those two classrooms are expressing our intentions to re-establish Boysen. Now secondary school. Again, and will be second to Maltec Secondary School, the only other secondary uh, school in Rabaul District. We are building one six-in-one classroom, three teachers' houses, and two ablution blocks. By we sign an agreement now, from Despela, after this groundbreaking ceremony. And thereafter, we must build at least another two teachers' houses. I've just been told and another six-in-one classroom. Students must begin enrollment next year, early next year, 2017. Boys and Secondary School must open for student intake in early February 2017. I'm setting the goalpost now, and I expect everyone, every one of us to work towards it. District Administrator Mark Novano says the school's redevelopment is part of the government's plan to have Robwana Ward as one of the district's sub-centers, including Watam, Tavoy, and Korkakol. We are looking at state land, available land, so we have no issue over that one. There are other developments, and by come up long here. By got water supply, we people like think thing long. Supply in school, Matalao, na Rabwana, na Rakuna, people like this, people like look look like this. I'm a people like project, we people like look look long here. So this is all developments, some people like working finish, and some people like come in, as we talk, we need to know about this school to solve the boys. And we got strategic linkage from them all the other areas. Now people are thinking, I'm long, relieving pressure along Gele Gele. Gele Gele is not going to be around. An MOA was signed between Rabaul District Development Authority and the Department of Works, which will oversee major works at the school to cost about 2.1 million kina. The groundbreaking coincided with the opening of double classrooms for Nodo Primary, and Tonata Elementary Schools. Mapun Pidian, NBC National News, Okopo. In the U.S., the FBI has released details of a phone call made by the Orlando nightclub shooter Omar Martin to 911, in which he pledged his allegiance to the Islamic State group. In Washington, the upper house has failed to pass gun control laws that would stop people on terrorism watch lists from buying firearms. Another day, another funeral for those lost in the Orlando nightclub massacre. I just want to thank everybody for the support. <laughs> because she literally loved everyone. <laughs> I wouldn't trade my mom for the world. <laughs> As the morning continues, so too the investigation. Today, police revealed details about a call shooter Omar Mateen made to 911 while holed up in a bathroom with hostages. What I can tell you is that while the killer made these murderous statements, he did so in a chilling, calm and deliberate manner. They didn't release the audio of the call but did provide a transcript. I want to let you know I'm in Orlando. I did the shootings, he told the operator. What's your name, the operator asked. My name is, I pledge allegiance to Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi of the Islamic State, he said. Look at that, they're shooting back and forth. Police have also defended the three hours it took them to take down the gunman. They say an initial shootout forced Mateen into the bathroom and no further shots were fired until they stormed the building. So during that time, our officers were intermittently in and out of that club, uh, saving people, rescuing people from inside the club. 
The Orlando shooting has prompted a vote on gun control reform in the U.S. Senate. Both sides of politics have put forward different versions of legislation to try to stop suspected terrorists from buying guns and to improve the background check system. Republicans say the Democrats' proposals infringe on the right to bear arms. Our colleagues want to make this about gun control when what we should be making this about is the fight to eliminate the Islamic extremi extremism. Democrats say the Republican legislation doesn't go far enough. We tried to limit the size of the ammunition clips, prevent firearms trafficking. But the NRA didn't accept those proposals. On this vote, the yeas are 47, the nays are 53. But in the partisan the atmosphere of an election year, all failed to pass. The ancient practice of yoga has become embroiled in a surprising controversy in India. The nation is marking International Yoga Day, but not everyone's happy with the way it's being exploited for commercial gain. Well, welcome to the discipline that is India's cultural gift to the world. The country is immensely proud of yoga and last year was an exercise in soft power strength to convince the UN of the benefits of a World Yoga Day. This year, it's no secret to say that India wants to marry well-being with wealth. The global wellness industry is worth some two trillion US dollars according to one estimate and the man that India is counting on to convert this cultural export into an economic earner is the man leading this mass yoga demonstration at the moment. The revered and sometimes controversial Baba Ramdev. Yoga is a very simple practice. This is in-flight yoga. Huh? This is office yoga. You can do this office time. Huh? So this is very easy. And that's what makes you so popular? <laughs> that is the reason. Yoga has been here for ages, but he invented easy ways through which everyone can follow it. That's why yoga has become so popular. Now, Ramdev's influence extends beyond poses to products. Using the influence of a revered yoga guru with a following of millions, he's founded a brand that sells everything from noodles to shampoo. The Patanjali company trades on the healthy Ayurvedic image and, most importantly, being very proudly Indian. It's a company which is one of the fastest growing in India and this year hopes to do some three quarters of a billion dollars worth of business. Some have criticised that as commercialism, cashing in on culture. It'll be good if we don't see his face on every newspaper in a Patanjali ad. What is wrong? And if I am uh, making good product for Indian people, my family people, all this world is my family. So I'm giving good product for my family. So this is my duty. So what I'm doing wrong? Now, Baba Ramdev is also seen as very closely aligned with the current Hindu nationalist government, which of course is pushing this cultural agenda. His companies are facing a number of court cases over business dealings and land allocations. Were there to be any responsibility attributed to him, some wonder whether that could affect the cultural push that is yoga diplomacy. NBC National News continues after the break. Stay with us.